Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking for integer solutions to an equation. We have 1 over x squared plus 1 over xy plus 1 over y squared equals 1. And x and y are integers. So I'll talk about restrictions first because I think it's important to talk about the domain. X and Y, since they're in the denominator, they cannot be zero. So we have to make sure that X does not equal zero and Y does not equal zero. Under those conditions, we can go ahead and make a common denominator. Let's go ahead and multiply by the appropriate terms. So the common denominator would be X squared, Y squared. So let's go ahead and multiply the first one by Y squared, the second one by XY, and the third one by X squared. And then we'll make a common denominator this way, which is going to be x squared, y squared. And that equals 1. Now, if you go ahead and cross multiply, notice that x and y are different from 0, so it's okay to do. And let's write the x squared first. So this turns into x squared plus xy plus y squared equals x squared times y squared. Awesome. Now, we can solve this equation obviously in, a, in different ways, but let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And I'm going to try to write this as a quadratic equation in x. So let's go ahead and write it this way. I'm going to keep the x squared y squared, but I'm going to write it as y squared x squared. And then bring over the x squared. And then minus xy, which I'm going to write as yx. And then finally, minus y squared equals 0. So I put everything on the right-hand side. All right? Now, the reason why I wrote it that way is I want to make this a quadratic equation in x. So here is our variable. x is the variable. And the others are basically constant, right? So we have the x squared here. We have the x squared here. And then we have the x here. So let's go ahead and put these two together, write it as y squared minus 1 times x squared minus y times x minus y squared equals 0. All right, so this is now an equation, uh, a quadratic equation in x. So let me make it a little more clear by kind of writing it a little differently. Let me use a different color here. I'll just use the blue. So this is going to be x squared and this is going to be x. Make sense? So this is a quadratic in x, and we can use the quadratic formula. Okay, but a couple things to be careful about. Uh, we said that x and y are different from 0 already, right? But we have additional restrictions, such as, in order for this to be a quadratic equation, y squared minus 1 needs to be different from 0. So let's go ahead and write that down too. Now what happens if y squared minus 1 equals 0? It just means y is equal to 1 or negative 1. We can also look at those cases separately. Now if, for example, if y is equal to 1, then we're going to get the following. Uh, we're going to get x squared, suppose y equals 1, okay? Uh, then we're going to get x squared plus x plus 1 equals x squared. And then if you cross those out, you're going to get x equals negative 1 from here. So if y is equal to negative 1, x is equal to negative 1. Now here's one thing to uh, be careful about. Uh, let's go ahead and check if this is going to work, right, in the original problem. So if x is equal to negative 1, we'll get 1 from here. If x and y are both equal to negative 1, their product is 1, we get another 1 from here. And then if y is negative 1, this, we get another 1. Unfortunately, uh, those values do not work. Okay. So we're going to make sure that uh, y squared minus 1 is equal to, is different from 0 in this case. But let's go ahead and write, and when I write the quadratic formula, uh, you're going to see why y cannot be 1 or negative 1. And of course, the same thing is true for x because this equation is symmetrical with respect to x and y. So x and y are interchangeable. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve this problem now. So from here, by using the quadratic formula, x becomes negative b, which is y, plus minus the square root of y squared, which is b squared, minus 4ac, but that's a minus minus, so that becomes a plus sign, times 4 times y squared times y squared minus 1. And all of that is divided by 2a, which is 2 times 
y squared minus 1. We could probably just write it like this with parentheses, or you can distribute if you want. Okay. Now notice that y squared, if y squared is equal to 1, then uh, the denominator is 0, and we have our expression is going to be undefined. Okay. Cool. So what am I going to do with this, right? Well, maybe we can simplify it. Let's go ahead and try to simplify it. Inside the radical, we have the following. y squared plus 4y to the fourth minus 4y squared. Okay. That is divided by 2 times y squared minus 1. Let's go ahead and simplify inside the radical a little bit more. So, b squared. Oh, uh, we made a mistake here, I think, right? Minus 4ac. No, actually, that's correct. Okay. So, we combine like terms. Let's go ahead and combine like terms here and see what we get from here. Well, y squared minus 4y squared is just going to be negative 3y squared. So we can write it like this. y plus minus. First of all, I'm going to write the 4y to the fourth, and then subtract 3y squared. Awesome. Obviously, we can take out a y squared here. We're going to do that next. If you take out a y squared, which becomes uh, a y on outside, you get 4y squared minus 3 inside the radical. Great. And we're interested in inside the uh, we're in interested in the what's inside the radical because that's what's going to determine um, the integer values, right? So we want x and y to be integers. In order for this to be an integer, uh, the expression inside the radical, this one, needs to be a perfect square, right? Or the expression, the square root of that expression, needs to be a rational number. Or in this case, I guess it's an integer. All right, anyways, so we're going to write it this way. Suppose 4y squared minus 3 is equal to another perfect square, which is z squared. And z is an integer here, so let's go ahead and put z on the left-hand side, and then factor the left-hand side using difference of two squares. Now, we were able to factor it into two factors, and 3 is a prime number, so we only have, like, you know, the following cases. 2y plus z can be 3, and 2y minus z can be 1. If we solve this as a system, we get 4y equals 4, and then that gives us y equals 1. But we know that y equals 1 is not going to work, so unfortunately, this doesn't really give us anything nice. How about 2y plus z equals negative 3, and 2y minus z is equal to negative 1? This also works, right? Well, kind of. Z cancels out, we get 4y equals negative 4, and y equals negative 1. Unfortunately, this is not going to work either, because we said that y squared minus 1 cannot be 0. How about the 1 and the 3 situation? Well, think about it for a minute. If you switch the 3 and the 1, the z value changes, but the y value does not change. So, you get the same two cases, therefore, we're not going to get any solutions from here. But these are the only possibilities. Well, too bad, we don't have any solutions. So this equation, which is 1 over x squared plus 1 over xy plus 1 over y squared equals 1, does not have any integer solutions, unfortunately. Now, if you look at another situation where we, after we simplify the expression and we got something like this, this equation is different from that one because in this case, x and y can be 0, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.